Good luck. Alright, so it's been a long time since we've played our most recent teaching ladder game. Uh, I'm mentally preparing both for my secondary teaching ladder game this weekend, as well as for a game... Uh, I'm going to be playing the All-American Fall Tournament Finals with Iron Gray. So, he won against a field of about 12 players, and uh, from that field... There were several very strong amateur players there. It's a tournament that's open to American players only. And so the way the format of that tournament works, whoever um, earns the most points in the first half of the event, um, or sorry, whoever knocks out players from the single elimination section of the tournament, then advances um, let me get my king a little bit safer here. And, uh, having advanced, hmm, this is interesting, uh, gets to play a best of three against, uh, the winner of the main part of the tournament. Or, I'm sorry, the winner from last season. Um... I'm going to deny the bishop the square. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to castle my king directly into this. Because I don't know what my opponent is intending. Um, this is interesting. Is there any reason for me to continue blocking my rook? I don't see any reason for that. Yeah, let's just do this. I don't see a counter to this. Okay. My overlay captures correctly. So that's good. Okay, let's get this pawn in hand. Recently, I've been um, installing a collection of proverbs into my chatbot. Not for any in-game advantage or anything nefarious, but um, because I think uh, proverbs could be fun to teach other players and myself to learn a little bit better. Um, gonna do this highly non-standard thing here because a lot of weird things are going on in this position. This silver bishop combination raises questions. All right, so I was wondering if my opponent was going to attempt something like this. And... Um, it's kind of incredible. So I intend to develop my bishop one way or another. They <laughs> more or less had signaled that this is something they strongly intended to do. Okay, I'm interrupting my points with other points. So, okay, they're going to play a low castle, but also not put their king on the very edge of the board. I was wondering if they were going to break up their castle like they've done here. Um, curious. It 
Sorry, I'm s focusing. I've not seen position exactly like this before. Okay, I'm going to extend the range of my uh, bishop here. So I introduced a proverb bot to help myself learn the proverbs a little bit better. Um, and really more by motivating myself to try to teach others. Um, so exchanging the pawn in front of the rook offers three advantages. One, you have a pawn in hand. Two, your rook can span the board in a single move. And three, uh, other pieces can flow more easily. So, yeah, by learning Proverbs, uh, this empowers us to try to put them into motion. Um, Okay, we're going to do something interesting. I haven't fully decided if I'm going to drop the rook back another rank and try to defend um, this rook pawn advancement this way, or if I'm going to exchange pawns and try to hold a rank behind here. Um... I think the latter, to be honest. Okay, we're going to just defend this super heavily and deal with this interesting opposing rook shape they've created. He who disturbs his position the least disturbs his opponent the most. It's a chess proper. Um, oh. Oh, hang on. There's some fun stuff we can do in this position. Um, we're going to do all the fun things here. I kind of wish I'd played that one move earlier. Because it sets the trap. Now, you might say, how can there possibly be a trap in this position? And so I shall do my best to enlighten. Now, I'm going way off the Joseki, but I think, like, I formed a central house castle in the weirdest spot ever. Yeah. Well, I expected something like this. Because um, otherwise I could sneer the rook. Hmm. 
Now I can still fight back against the Rook pretty heavily. Um, so let's show that off. So the point here is that I want to push this pawn, activating my Rook, cutting off the square behind this Rook, so I can drop a pawn here, so that all hell can break loose while his king is still in the center. That's the plan. Is it a good plan? Well, we'll find out in post-game analysis. Um, but yeah, my opponent has committed to a very heavy... Uh, well, the speed of the game is dependent upon the location of the kings. I've slightly moved my king off-center. Uh, his king is still in the center of the board. So we'll see how this plays out. But yeah, they've dealt with every standard way that I could approach their position. So I've come up with this very unorthodox attack. But if it works, then it works. Doesn't matter how orthodox the attack is if it functions. Now, does it work? I've not had all the time in the world to verify that this actually uh, succeeds. And they're moving quickly, and I don't have much time to think. Um, but I think this creates an interesting position. So win or lose, this will be interesting. At the very least, we've given them something to think about here. Okay, so he offers a bishop exchange. Uh, his king is still in the center. His rook is temporarily inconvenienced. I should take this exchange unless there's some overriding concern here. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything that overrides other concerns, so... Um, now if I exchange here, their knight takes, and I can drop a bishop, forking the knight and the lance. Um, this knight allows their rook to capture here, and prevents my rook from capturing here. I don't have much choice. I have to activate my pieces somehow. So this is going to be my way forward. Um, so this attacks two pieces at once. The main concern I had is that my opponent has a bishop in hand. I don't have a concrete way to counter every possible bishop move. Uh, the good thing about this position is that um, their options are also kind of limited here. So I promote my bishop so it's safe. Also, um, I can pursue their rook. Their rook might try... Oh! I didn't think they would do that. Um, hmm. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. My rook is somewhat exposed where it stands. If I step back one, I'm still exposed. 
Should I threaten a lance drop? Um... Yeah, the, my rook is not so mobile up here. It would be more mobile if I moved it down one. It'd also be a little bit easier for him to target, unfortunately. Um... I'm not sure what he's planning. Well, he's got a bishop drop here, which is more than a bit inconvenient for me. Um, I can't prevent every bishop drop, can I? I don't see a good way to prevent every... Well, I can advance the silver up one, but then he's got this drop here. So... I have only one way to stop every bishop drop, and it's quite miserable. Um... No, I'm sorry, I could move my gold up. It's a weird shape. No, they still have this drop. I could exchange my rook for the bishop, which is terrible. I don't want that exchange. Um... I'm trying to find some other way. If I had a pawn, this would be different. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I've still got threats. Yeah. This deals with all the important bishop drops. There's one unimportant bishop drop here. I don't need to worry about at the moment. That's right, because I've got this lance drop threat. So, yeah, I've collected a lance. Um, this position's painful, but I'm alive. It's going to be more painful if I have to move the gold out away from my king, but what can I do? Um, my opponent has played a low castle. Our king is still in the center. I don't have any way to break this shape immediately. So I do have, like, horse here, horse here, horse here, to get my horse out of the corner. It's not pleasant, but it's functional. Um... Do I make this clip shape? It's probably safer than bringing the gold up, but if I bring the gold up, I could bring the silver up, but then there's holes everywhere. Um, oh, there's another fun thing going on here, isn't there? No. 
no, that's that's me thinking in a way that doesn't make sense. Um, oh, if I move the gold over one, that frees me to move the knight without fear of hanging too many things. Yeah, that's not terrible. And the bishop drop and hit this point. Hmm. All right, I think I've defended against a lot of things here. It's unfortunate I don't have more pawn. I don't have a pawn in hand. Um, I don't have an easy way to remove this without negative consequences. I mean, I could bring the silver up to take it, but that breaks my shape even further. Um. I'm not sure how to progress here. There is a proverb called, just push the edge pawn. But I don't know. Just because I've heard a proverb, does that make it true? Um, hmm. OK, so they attack my rook. I don't want to retreat. Oh, that's clever. That allows them to attack this side of the board. Um... Hmm, which side? Yeah, this is best. This is cleverly executed. This puts pressure in front of my silver. Yeah, nicely done. Um... I got impatient. So, honestly, I've had a hallucination for many turns in a row here. And that hallucination has been that if the rook backs up and I pursue it with a lance, um, that they could drop a pawn to block my attack. They can't actually drop a pawn in front of the rook, because there's already a pawn there, at least as it stands right now. My king is exposed, but what of it? There's 
only so much they can do here. Yeah, I'm not seeing the problem here. I'm looking. This isn't what I would have wanted, but I'm not seeing a problem. I mean, sure, yeah, my king's exposed. But there's other pieces in this position. So let's not forget uh, to use all of our pieces effectively. Here he faces the same quandary he had last turn, just that the rook is defending this pawn, but what now? I need an attack though, if I need if I'm attempting to win. I can't just take a lance and call it there. I need an attack. That traps the rook. Unless I've missed something, that's just a blunder. Yeah, no, that's that's a whopper right there. They have a one heck of an attack, but um that doesn't last forever. Yeah, pawn, rook, pawn is a shape that I've produced in the past. And today we're going to see what I've learned from having made that shape in the past. Maybe I'm just a little bit traumatized over the last time I made this shape. And I'm just overreacting here, but I don't know. This gold and king are moving further apart. And so now I cut off the rook's support against this square. So this is one way to break up the attack, um, I guess, on two, th or Lance drop two fives, so this is the two seven square here. You count one, two, and then down seven. All right. Now, how crazy am I? Uh, if I keep moving the king forward, that long term doesn't help me because they can, they have a ton of pawns and a lance that I'm about to give them. Um, so my generosity has to have some, or my adventure uh, has to have some bounds. Um, hmm. Yeah, so... Oh! 
I wasn't even thinking. Here I'm returning material. They can easily drop the lance and easily collect the rook back. Um, I wasn't even thinking about it that way. But my attack is so severe that losing a rook is not a concern. Yeah, that's fine. Who needs a rook? Um, so, yeah, I guess we continue beating the war drum here. Like, I should take the gold and threaten stuff against their king. Unless taking the lance is actually better. I can't imagine that it is. They have a lot of pieces. This is not comfortable. Alright, let's let's just play ball here. See what we got. To check is to chase. I should have like maybe drop I consider dropping it along the rank, and that doesn't actually work. So this is still the better idea, even if I'm displeased by the outcome. Um Yeah, so I should just take here. Uh, so I was thinking I want to take the lance here. Because um, I couldn't find a way for their attack to continue forever. And this lance is a really annoying piece. If I step back, they start collecting all my pieces, and my king is still in peril. So I don't really have a choice here. I have to take that. Uh, here I'm losing the rook to a bishop fork. <sighs> That's unfortunate. All right. Well. Yeah, what do I say? I don't know. Like I said, I'm a bit tilted. I did read a lot of things, but I just didn't read this particular four. But, like, obviously, I've been slacking here. Um, yeah, so if I move the king carelessly, um, and they get this discovery, and it's probably checkmate. I'm exhausted, but... Um, yeah, my king needs to run this way. It does drop my gold and silver, which they were going to win anyway. Um, so they can take time collecting those pieces, and I can continue an attack against their king. Yeah, my other teaching letter uh, game this weekend, hopefully I can schedule it. And if so, it'll be uh, with the Sixton amateur. Um, so that will be a very exciting encounter. Um, but yeah, given the way this is playing out, I'm not optimistic about being able to win that game. I should focus on this game. So my pawn is hanging. My everything here is hanging. The only thing that's solid in this position is this little clip here. Just the one shape we heard about most recently on uh, the theory teaching live streams by our Harbor Master Shogi Harbor. Um, but yeah, the rest of this is not holding together very well. That's bizarre. 
unless there's a mate here. I mean, yeah, they want to surround my king, sure. The theory of it makes sense. In practice, is that... I don't know that encompassing the king in this manner is actually going to surround it. Further, I can stop a rook promotion. This is so bizarre. I'm just deciding do I want to take the land, uh, silver. Because capturing the silver might be stronger than anything else I can do here. This has to be the reasonable path forward. I need to pursue this king. Um, what convinced me here is that, um, well, a fallacy. I assumed that bishop takes was necessary. Rook takes is possible. Um, I hallucinated a lot of things here. After rook takes, it's not so obvious how to proceed, but a knight drop attacking here actually looks quite strong. So yeah, they have a knight in hand. Uh, unfortunately for them, knight's not the correct piece to checkmate my king. Um, oh, hang on. Pawn drop on the king. Oh, man. That's weird. I should have looked at that earlier. Well, no, if I do that, then I can collect the rook. If the king takes. And if the king doesn't take, then my tactics are severe. No, they have counters to each of my attacks there, though. It's not so obvious. This is not so obvious how to play. So I'm trying to prevent the king from running out of the castle, where even if I ended up collecting a lot of material, my position would suck at the very end. Um, instead, yeah, I just have to surround like this. I do gain a tempo. They'll also gain a tempo with this bishop check and then king over and the rook check. And I might drop a gold to block. But if I drop a gold, I'm in danger. So maybe I don't block that way. But it's it's scary. Oh. This, I did not think was feasible for multiple reasons. Um, hmm. No, that's a sensible defensive idea. It might not work, but it's a reasonable idea. It might work. Trick here is that I need this foothold to deliver the mate when I do a gold drop here. I think there's some combination where if somehow I fail to mate on the left and push the king over to the right, I need this to support another piece 
that can deliver the mate. Separately, I mean, this completely cuts off the rook. Right, so his big concept here was that this bishop was going to promote with check, and this promoting bishop is going to cause a problem, unless it doesn't. So if I go this way, I get mated in one, so I have to go the other direction. I'm being careful not to give him a silver or a gold, at least in cases where this could checkmate me. And I need to prepare, prepare an escape path. So now I can move the pawn that was trapping my king and approach the back this way. Alternatively, rook takes pawn promotion. Um, could get my king out of this hellhole. I'm still trying to read if Lance drop mates or not. It's close, but I don't think it's close enough. Sanjudio So again, I'm being careful not to give him pieces that could checkmate me. My read of this position is that one more knight for him is not going to make the difference here. Um... I'm trying to checkmate him. I'm being a bit I don't know, pretentious, I guess. In assuming that I have a mate. So this helps defend my king. Therefore, we're going to play this as a defensive move. And my king can walk out of the board through the 5-5 five five square if necessary. The next question is, can I actually mate this king? I don't think so. I've got a ton of pieces, but I don't see a mate. 
30秒40秒I do see a lance drop that partitions the board. I see like bishop drop, or I see like silver drops and general drops that really, really put the screws on the king, but I'm not seeing a mate just yet. You'd think that this lance drop pawn block, well, they can't block with the pawn. They'd have to block the knight. They block the knight, they don't have other pieces to block with. Oh, if I could drop the bishop back here, now they don't have the gold interposition. They still have a knight to block. Oh, this knight protects 5-6. So any mate I dreamt of with a gold drop here is, not, is illusory. There is no mate like that. I think that mates. I think I've got their king pretty well surrounded at this point. It's just a question of finding the most economical mate. Now the king walks up this way. It's unpleasant. Then I have dragon takes pawn. They block with another pawn, and then dragon takes his mate. Yeah. Oh, their king runs back this way, doesn't it? I did not expect this. I should have expected this. Um, no, I see another way. I think dragon takes knight? It's not quite mate. I've bungled the mate here. But 
my king can survive this, so it's okay. I can't count. Hmm, this is less okay than I thought it was a second ago. This is much less okay than I casually referred to it being. This is not casual at all. The more pieces I exchange, the more dangerous this becomes. Let's activate my dragon again. On. I did not see that. That's right, there are pawns in this game. Hmm, that's disappointing. Thank you. I'm being crazy. This is risky, but I'm trying to clear a path for my king. No, actually, this is not crazy. I'm trying to force them to drop a piece. Um, so that my king is in less danger than it is right now. They can't drop a pawn. My rook is invincible. It's not so crazy. That's amazing. That was very unexpected. Does the silver mate me? I don't think so. They have only like one check. It's going to be amazing if that does checkmate me somehow. Okay, I've accidentally 
<sighs> the silver actually forks the king and the pawn. I thought this pawn was going to force a he-she. It doesn't, because they're able to collect the pawn. Um, my king is aiming to run up the board like this, so... Yeah, so for that, I had intended to march my king up, as I will. Um... I've made my own task much more complicated than it needs to be. So this, as far as I know, the pawn is uh, forming an enormous threat here. And by the time they stop checking me, they'll have to take it. Um, yes, they have to take that. Uh, connection lost. I assume they'll fix their internet connection as soon as they can. So... The next thing I'm aiming for is king takes pawn, threatening dragon takes pawn, with a severe attack afterward. I mean, I'm also threatening just to sack for the pawn, take the bishop, and try to mate, but I don't believe it. I'm more just trying to escape my king. Okay, they try to solidify their shape. This is the downside of giving up this 1-3 square. Um, but it does have upsides that are significant. I would have done the same. I would have done the same thing. Um, I don't want the king to escape. I want to checkmate the king.
30秒40秒 I think next on my agenda is the sacrifice with or without this gold taking in between or the gold drop in between um, if I gold drop then I don't have a successive check I hope I'm reading this correctly. I think I just take something here. Okay. So at some point of the game, I was able to calm down and find a checkmate. So the end result was positive. The path we took to get there... Thanks for the game. The path we took to get there was a bit much. Um, wow. All right. That was epic. So uh, yeah, let's do some post-game analysis. Oh. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, we tend to have pretty crazy games, so this was no exception. Uh, yeah, we'll decompress a bit. But uh, pros tend to analyze a game from the beginning. And so once we had a second to calm down from that insane um, end game that we had. Oh, I guess maybe this is more straightforward. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess I'll actually just suggest let's try, um, let's try analysis this way. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I missed something. Uh, yeah. I probably, uh, missed some dates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and this way, if we're analyzing it on the stream, then everybody else gets a chance, uh, yeah. 
uh, to see the board in this large view. So that's one benefit of doing it this way is that I don't have a way to show the chat on my screen while also, or I can't see the 81 Dojo chat and also have the board fully displayed here. Uh, yeah, welcome. Um, so yeah, I think professionals analyze the game from the beginning. So that's normally why I recommend as well. Um, at least that's my impression of how they do it. Um, I know end games are super exciting, and we'll probably spend a lot of time on the end game if I had to guess. But um, yeah, this is interesting. So um, we avoided bishop exchange and instead got some third foul stuff going on. I knew that you were intending to play this opposing rook thing because we've played similar things before, and I've uh, I thought this floating rook on 7-5 was an interesting way to try to counter it. Oh, this is normal. Yeah. I guess this is Joseki. Probably even more normal would be if I played back to 7-6, but I just couldn't find a way after, like, drop of the rook to 7-6 and you play uh, the reclining silver. I just couldn't find a way to activate the rook after that. So yeah, we just freestyled it from here. And, uh, yeah, I fought against your rook, and you managed to break through anyway, which was clever. Yeah, maybe I underestimated this breakthrough. Um, probably. So, yeah, I liked my pawn 2-6. was kind of, I mean, we're freestyling it, but this is risky. Because I'm giving you the pawn, I'm not going to have a pawn in hand, and you're going to get lots of pawns. Um, on the other hand, your king is still in the center, so I was banking on being able to counterattack. Ah, yes, yeah, so the idea was, like, I'm threatening this, but also this and that. Um, so this is kind of what I was up to here. Um, trying to force the board open while your king is still in the middle. And um, that's, I think it is confusing. I was confused by your rook 2-4. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, ideal if those other pawns weren't there, the rook 2-4 would be pretty cool, but yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we've had previous games and you built a really nice formation in previous games. And so this time I kind of wrecked it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I did this and forced open the position. Um, yeah, there's that beautiful hole there. If we had, um, yeah, it's scary stuff. Uh, were you, by this, you, you're talking about like me dropping something there right now or no? I mean, long term, it's a strategic hole. Long term, if I can exchange bishops, uh, yeah, that's a weakness that just never goes away. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so then I played this. And yeah, you're right that this pawn advance, I'd been thinking about this during the game. And I think I had resolved to try something like this. I wasn't totally sure if I was going to do this or just chase your rook right away and sacrifice a silver just to get rooks exchanged. Either way looked kind of interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess this loses a tempo. Um, so eventually I'll get to collect the knight. Hmm, this is complicated. Um, hmm. How to play this? Oh, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, we played a very interesting teaching ladder game here a minute ago. Uh, it was pretty nuts. Yeah, so now we're in the post-game analysis trying to figure out, like, um, should I offer the rook exchange this way? Should I play rook 5-5 five five and, oh, get skewered and lose my bishop? Probably not. So, yeah, probably... 
Um, well, if I offer the Rook Exchange, you decline the Rook Exchange, and I'm just down three pawns or four pawns or something. Yeah, this is insane. Um, but that's generally how our teaching ladder games go, is that we get some wild tactics, and just insanity breaks out. Um, so, yeah, I do wonder about this position. Actually, yeah, well... Yeah, it's complicated. What the rook doing? Oh, the rook floating. We're doing some super confusing floating rook stuff. Yeah, that's actually interesting with... Yeah, I think you had a point that if this, this, we bring the knight out, then I can float the rook over here. And then if you open this, actually I've got this intermediate move. It there may or may not be a way to justify my nonsense. Maybe my nonsense doesn't quite work out. Oh, yeah, but then uh, my rook gets kicked back anyway, and we create another hole right in front of the king. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Or maybe I play it the other way, or I do the rook 5-5 five five first, and then get my rook kicked around all these other places, watch all these pieces move forward, and then give me a ton of places to drop a rook if, if we can ever get the rooks exchanged. Or maybe I just sack a silver and, and things get complicated. I don't know. I was a little bit in over my head this opening. So uh, it was still exciting, though. So that was cool. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what more to say about this particular position. Yeah, I was half expecting this, but it's hard to understand. Um. But yeah, we got here through them playing Opposing Rook, and I played Third Foul Rook. Uh, so yeah, welcome, Shogi explained, and everyone uh, from the Q Combat series that you are playing today. Sorry we skipped out to play their Teaching Ladder game, but I've got another Teaching Ladder game set up this weekend, and then um, I'll have my Fall Tournament Finals Game 1. So... Um, yeah, pawn four five. This is sharp stuff. So we're threatened. We're I'm basically forced to exchange bishops here. Um. And this gives me an opportunity to drop the bishop, and collect a lance, but I'm not sure that that was the greatest idea. Perhaps I had some ideas with a bishop drop here and then running back. I don't know. Perhaps there were other ways this could have gone. Like. I briefly entertained the idea of trying to get the knight out to protect my pawn and then further entrap the rook. It's, I don't know, it's kind of a mess. Uh, sorry, I think I missed Gaston's comment. Uh, yes, I'm still present here in Twitch. Let me see. I know Alexei was looking on as well. 2-6 uh, pawn was an interesting idea, but okay, my concept of trapping the rook actually isn't going to happen. That makes sense. Um, so, yeah, we were forced to exchange bishops, and my attack was a little over-optimistic because I'm not going to get the rook trap. So, given that the thing upon which my entire idea rests isn't real, um, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, so, I mean, yeah, this is an idea, I guess. I briefly entertained this as well. Because uh, the king is in the center. We do get some, we do get a nice silver. And given a silver, then maybe now there's a rook trap. Um, but, hmm, I don't know. It's interesting. Um... I'm perhaps in over my head here, too. Yeah, I'm not... Hmm. Yeah, this is clever, because I get another piece to attack with, and if only I didn't have this pawn on 5-7, I could put the silver here, threaten to pawn drop and exchange even more pieces, but um, instead the pawn would have to go on 6-3 and... Probably this doesn't come close enough to making mate threats. Uh, it's a cool idea, for sure. Um, 
Yeah. We'll have to rely on engines to help us figure out some of the opening Joseki, because this is just super complicated. And probably the conclusion that we come to from all of this is that while I had some cool attacking ideas, I would have been better served at some point to just drop the rook back to 7-6 and defend the 2-6 square, preventing my opponent from playing pawn 2-6 in the first place. And we would have had a different game. Um, but that's ultimately not how this went. Um, let me see, what else is there? So... And we did this bishop exchange. Oh, wait. Um, okay, I've got the hat. Cool. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, we did this exchange. I got greedy and wanted a lance. There might have been other attacking ideas here. Well, no, this knight defends this pawn, so I can't exactly do this. Um, hmm. And, oh. Hang on. This could have been fun. That's my kind of move. It doesn't even get the lance, but boy, is that some speculative fun right there. It's not good, but it's fun. Um, hmm. Because, like, if this rook goes back, then I can promote here. And while this doesn't really lead anywhere, uh, it looks scary. Um, but I don't see a follow-up here. So it's probably not the right timing for something like that. There are other positions where if your opponent just hasn't castled, that's a good idea. But uh, there's a proverb about like having a rook, silver, uh, what's it, pawn and knight all attacking. If I remember correctly, and perhaps I don't. Uh, so yeah, we did get them to move their gold up, and I collected a lance, and uh, this still isn't enough to really threaten to win the rook, because the rook still has the 6-6 six, six square. Um, so yeah, my bishop's just off in La La Land, it's not the smartest idea I've ever had. Um... And I was... So, yeah, there are bishop drops to be concerned about. Um, generally, bishop 8-8 eight, eight is something kind of scary because they can take the lance and then go back into the center really quickly. Um, depending where the other generals are located, sometimes threatening to take the knight is an idea, but not here. So, yeah, maybe bishop 8-8 eight, eight was an idea? I don't know. Um, I mean, sure. Oh, wait. No, I was uh, starting to think about trying to attack on the center file, trying to attack somewhere near the center, but I'm not sure. Like, if I were to try to attack from the center, it would have to be something like this, um, which is already looking pretty weird. But yeah, the uh, follow up be something like this. Oh, yeah, so you have this pawn advance that breaks my idea. Um, now, I wonder does this, at this point, should I start trying to grab material? So this rook floating across the rank is pretty scary. I don't want it floating there forever. Um,. So perhaps this is the occasion where I form the clip, give the king somewhere to escape if necessary. Um, and I don't know where next we go. But yeah, I think this pawn, this shape is actually pretty reasonable for Gota. That I can't really break this... Uh, as it stands right now, and I can't win the rook. I guess I'm counting on if rook 6-6, six, six, this is the one shot where I've got where I could, like, sack the gold to collect the bishop, but this leaves my king really exposed. Actually, that's mate. Never mind. So if I were trying to do this, uh, and if I get greedy, 
Uh, it's not so smart, is it? Nope. All right. So my trap is a bad idea, but also this is a nice strong shape. So yeah, I don't see a way to break that. Um, so how do I counter this bishop 8-8? I mean, I guess switch up the move order, right? So now we're actually threatening to trap the rook. And, okay, so this might refute my bishop 8-8 eight eight idea altogether. And that's probably why you didn't play it. If I had to guess. Um, yes, instead this simply taking the pawn seems reasonable. It's better than... Yeah, obviously if the knight moved up, that would be a huge problem for uh, my horse to be able to escape easily. Uh, if you don't capture the pawn in 2-6, maybe play more safely. So you're talking about just not taking this in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I think Alexei said it correctly, though, that this... My idea, as fun as it was... Is not a good idea. That I'm not succeeding in my original point of trapping the rook. And while I do have this concept of trying to force the board open, it's there's got to be a better way than what I did. Um, I did briefly consider this, but that doesn't quite work here. Maybe uh, later in the game I considered this move. Maybe this is what I should have done right now, however. The idea that this time uh, you can break the pin this way. Um, hmm. Uh, I thought I had a follow up here. So. No, I don't. I don't have a continuation. Yeah. And I thought I had something here. Um, that's really unfortunate. Okay, so yeah, the sacrifice is crazy here. Um... And there's no advantage I can perceive of this way of doing things. Yeah, never mind. I thought there would be something there, but there's just not. So, yeah, my pawn sacrifice, trying to lure your rook into a trap, um, might not have worked if everything had gone perfectly. Um... This pawn drop I thought was a very good move. This creates a future threat that I have a very difficult time dealing with. So unless I'm going to take the time right now to take the pawn, well, I can't even do that because then the pawn just advances. Well, yeah, I mean, the pawn advances, I can drop a lance, but then the promoted pawn takes my gold and... My, my castle is starting to collapse here. So, uh, yeah, that's a really good move. And kind of suggests that way back here, um, if I were just a bit more careful and a bit less excited, I just play a calmer move like this. And then my position sucks a bit, and I don't know how to deal with this. So, a different move order I could have reached a similar position from. So, like, when I dropped the rook back, I probably should have considered this. My problem was I didn't want you taking this square, because I didn't want to have to sacrifice this pawn with my rook being attacked. Um... The more I think about this, this isn't really an issue, is it? Because you're not going to take my pawn. Um, 
if you take here, I've got a threat this way. And while it's not decisive, it's more than pleasant for me. Yeah, so this is the normal Joseki. And if I studied harder, I would know that. Yeah. So, yeah, I should prefer... Uh, yeah, that normal Joseki is something I should have preferred. And having messed up on the normal Joseki, I mean, this is my chance to go back and try to correct it. Although I've lost a tempo. Um, but again, you're not going to take my pawn. Or you might, because this time you can actually protect this. So it gets complicated. I started to think about this sort of thing. But um, yeah, figuring out Joseki over the board is, or in the middle of a game is kind of hard. But yeah, I think your attack was quite reasonable. And my defense didn't quite measure up to it. Um, although I did get a lance and was able to make some threats and I remembered this clip shape and I figured I didn't see any significant advantage to lifting up the gold to try to cover this corner. So I just uh, moved this out one. Figuring that uh, our games normally get pretty crazy, I want some solid solidity to my castle. Ah, you don't understand gold 7-9. So what I was concerned that next might happen is this, and then taking there. Um, and I did like think about other ways I can defend this point, but I mean, I thought about this, and I'm like, well, that doesn't work. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I could consider this, but this felt kind of fragile. Uh, another idea I had was just, like, try to gradually bring um, my horse back into the game, which seems really, really slow, and I didn't want to see that, because, again, the bishop drop, bishop takes lance, and your attack doesn't stop. So, yeah, I don't know really what I should try to do here. So I found this candidate, I found this candidate, obviously this is what I played. There might be other candidates here that I'm just not seeing. I briefly considered that one. I wonder what other candidates there are. But, um, yeah, this horse being in the corner kind of discouraged me, so... Um, I started to slightly lose interest in how I'd played this opening, just because I confused myself and knew there was something earlier than this that I had to learn. And now I'm appreciative that you explain, like, oh yeah, that's the normal Joseki. You could put the rook back on 7-6 and push the pawn, and you have threats still. Um, so that's a normal way to counter this opposing rook that could potentially force the opposing rook to move over to the third file to protect the bishop's head. But yeah, these were ideas I was thinking about. Is there some other candidate that, like, I missed here? I have lance drops in various spots, but none of them seem decisive. Uh, the idea of knight 7-7 seven, seven didn't look interesting, but maybe it's better than it looks. Um, oh, Lance 7, or 6-7 is kind of interesting. I say kind of, because there's still a lot of problems with it. But the idea is to like just cut off the king here. Um, I wasn't sure what to think about this, and I kind of wimped out and didn't play it. But that could have been fun. 
Um, yeah, I mean, this is probably my most aggressive move in the position. Yeah, so I produce a wall over here and a wall over there. Uh, okay, this is interesting. So this bishop drop. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, right. Yes, you're correct. Um, I see. Yeah, my attack is kind of dead, isn't it? Wow, that's a lot more serious than I thought. Okay, so I can't do things that way. Yeah, that's a wall. So if I were to consider an idea, I'd have to put the lance elsewhere. Um, given how severe these bishop attacking this way and bishop attacking this way are, either some lance protecting from the center, which looks kind of weird, I don't like it. Or, I mean, I briefly thought about this. This also seems pretty weird. Um, it has some reasonable motivation, but it's pretty unpleasant. On the other hand, I mean, maybe I have a moment to play it. I don't know, this got really complicated. Ah, hello. Uh, yesterday you started playing Shogi. It's good that there is a site like Lee Chess. Um, yeah. Yeah, there is definitely a site Lee Shogi. It's quite popular. I like that it has a ability to uh, study positions. Um, hmm. I don't know about this one. This is kind of out there. So, hmm. yeah, I don't know. Shogi's hard. <laughs> Shogi's really complicated. Yeah, 81 Dojo's got a excellent post-game analysis capability, or even kind of crosses the English-Japanese language barrier with some auto-translated contexts. Um, there's a lot of tournaments and exciting games on the site, so 81 Dojo is pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm fixating too much over this position, but yeah, the, I guess the point is uh, that this opposing rook, this has a very strong attack here, and it's not so easy for Senta here to make anything reasonable happen. Let's see what we've got. So yeah, this is the way we went. The bishop did attack this way. I briefly tinkered with the idea of, uh, yep, that was the game move in fact. This exposes a heavy attack over here. Um, and I was confident here, and I don't know why. Um, we had this exchange, which looks plausible. Um, there's a lot going on in this position. I didn't know how to break this down, really. But yeah, I'm threatening the rook, but if I take the rook, then a knight could recapture, but if the knight recaptures, then my horse can move out, but the horse can't go anywhere useful. Um, but the more important point about taking the rook is that if I get enough pieces, then maybe I can start to make a threat against the king. But my own king is in some pretty hot water here. So I prefer my opponent's position, despite the lance difference. A lance is not a lot of material. Um, but yeah, this is how this went. So no introduction to tactics on a ch as on a chess site. Uh, actually, there is a tutorial on Shogi Wars that does teach tactics. It's not super well promoted, but you can find the tutorial there. Um, it'd be nice if other sites like Play Shogi had 
It has some tutorials. I haven't checked it out lately. Hopefully over time, Play Shogi will become more and more of a bastion for new players to learn stuff. Because, yeah, there's a lot of tactics and a lot of ideas. Uh, there's also many proverbs, and one such proverb is that if you have four pieces attacking, then the attack will never run out. And if we count right now, we have a bishop attacking, a pawn, and a rook. So this is like the make it or break it moment where I want to cut off this attack at all costs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was expecting this rook to float out and cause me a major headache here. And... Oh, this is complicated. But here I was trying to desperately break the rook off of the attack. Um, so the saying is drop a lance far back. It's, I mean, yeah, if I dropped it right there, they could take it. I'm not going to drop it there. Um, I mean, if I am dropping the lance, surely it would be back here or be attacking the bishop or something. Um, oh, I was also thinking about, like, while all this is going on, do I just want to take this pawn? Because <laughs> I'm crazy. Ah, uh, why am I so crazy? Um, but, yeah, I was kind of thinking about this. Which is pretty weird. Um, yeah, Shogi's heart. So what comment did I miss here just a second ago? Sorry. A lot of bad Aji around my... <laughs> I mean, yeah, Alexei means my king. My king is, like, super overexposed here. Uh, yeah, so... Bishop... Well, no, I'm sorry. The pawn's protected for now. But, um... Yeah, so if we have this, what if I try this? Just how bad is my position? How bad is it? So, okay, yeah, I mean, dancing the rooks... Like, well, I'm sorry, it's kind of necessary here, isn't it? I was imagining there was... Oh, wait. No, actually, yeah. I was imagining this was possible. Um, so... This is where things get interesting. Yeah, there's there's a lot of pain here. All right, what comment have I missed this time? Let me check. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of badge Aji surrounding my king. Aji is Japanese for taste. So, like, there's a lot of potential right around my king for my opponent to do something terrifying. Um, yeah, so this is probably not the right way for me to handle this. But it's not so clear, like, what I can do. I've dug a grave for myself. And now I have to find a way to, like, deal with it. Um, I mean, potentially something like this could be interesting. Where the I next idea would be like this and that. Um, I don't know, though. I really don't. I mean, thankfully, I've got this silver and gold both protecting each other. So that's, like, one thing I've done correctly in this. But, yeah, we're freestyling it. This is the Wild West of Shogi. Yes, against this... There's going to be more tactics that follow. 
Um, Got to re retreat back this way. Unless I'm being bold as to take the pawn with the rook, but that seems not right. So yeah, I'm allowing another pawn on my king's head. Oh, but then they have this pawn. Oh, I missed that completely. Well, that's an issue. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this really hurts a lot. Because I was thinking that I would have an attack this game. But clearly, this tells me I'm defending. While I have managed to push the pawn from 2-6 to 2-5, um, yeah, this hurts. This is not good. With my horse in the corner, my knight on the edge, my generals not defending each other, a hole on my king's head, this is pain. So, yeah, well spotted. Um, only, yeah, the more I dig here, the more trouble I'm in. So, that makes sense. Yeah, I can't resort to tactics to solve everything unless I'm some master tactician. And I'm not there yet. So yeah, this was the key idea. Um, just putting pressure over here, you still have pressure there, still got pressure here. Yeah, my king is a sitting duck. There's a proverb that a king in the center is a sitting duck. Both our kings are in the center, but mine is more of a sitting duck than theirs. So then I did this sacrifice, which I thought was clever. And then I took this pawn, which was not clever. I, you know, I didn't even much regret it. Um, just because my attacking, I had some attacking potential. Oh, you missed a mate in three. That's unfortunate. Um, that's most unfortunate. But yeah, here... If I just, I don't know, I could just read positions. You know, if I just had some crystal ball or just were better at reading. Like, that's a nice calm move, isn't it? <laughs> I could have played a nice calm move here. And things would have been not so terrible. <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah. it took me a while to learn the kanji as well. That's something that all new players have some challenge with. But hey, we got an exciting game here, because I exchanged my rook, and we get this madness. Um, I wonder, though... So yeah, I was un not very happy when I saw this, but I figured uh, I can't complain too much. I've still got some attacking chances here, but if it's this is not what Senta was aiming for at the beginning of the game. Um, yeah, I mean I've still got attacking chances. But having my opponent have both bishops and both rooks is not exactly my comfort zone. Um, there's not much I can do there. Instead, we have this rook check. Uh, so the book um, by Katagami Sensei talks about endgames and mentions that you should drop rooks at a distance. Now, yeah, there's still this. So, as a general principle, rooks at a distance are most effective. Um, yeah, my king is, like, in some kind of a mating net, though. 
So I have to be like extremely careful where I go next. Uh, I have no idea. Feels like if I'm going to survive this, I probably need to retreat. If I had to guess. And I'm perhaps surviving this. Um, yeah, this is curious. So I mentioned how we'd have time to analyze the end game. Um, yeah, there's a lot of positions here. So, and I know my opponent was very invested in this end game. I was, I'm still stumped as to like what the heck happened. Uh, I know that I should be able to play better than I did play. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Jeez. Even in the post-game analysis, I'm suffering. Yeah, so this actually suggests that... This is the way to go. Wow, why did I not see that dance back and forth there? Yeah, this is clearly strongest, setting up some very scary threats here. Um, if I had a silver, the silver block there... Oh, I'm sorry, no, never mind. This gold drop is enormous. Wow. Oh dear, this is something. I don't have checkmate. Um. Hmm. Okay. This is complicated. I mean, I'm probably lost here. Note, if I bring up the silver, gold drop on the head is mate. Um, yeah, this is probably lost. I know I have attacking moves, but their rook covers a lot of my checking ideas. I don't have a lot of material. I don't have a lot of places to go. Yeah, there's no defending this, is there? That's awesome. Yeah, this bishop takes gold. Just even though that's not check, this uh, seems to decide the game. I guess the only thing Senta could do is protect the square without trapping Senta's king here. Uh, oh. Okay, take care. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Yeah, that's fine. So sorry, we'll have to... I'll get to analyze the end game uh, a little bit deeper on my own here. I think it's just as okay for me. Um, apologies to viewers who had expectations about what we might look at here. Uh, yeah, so this, I mean, this did not go at all how I predicted. Let me quickly check what we're talking about here. Alexei says 69, uh, gold 3B plus, gold, wait, uh, 6-3 bishop plus. Oh, um, black had a mate, six, three, B plus, oh, I'm sorry, 89, I had the wrong move number, yeah, let me get back to move 89 and put this on the large board so I can see it, I got too excited around here. 
That's my fault. So, this promotion, um, and then this king taking here, we have our one space gap dragon. Um, I apologize if I've this makes people tilt or something that is taking me a minute to appreciate this. Um, okay, let's see what the next comment is. He's hard pressed for Igoma. Yeah. This is amazing. Uh, mm hmm. hmm. Alright, so we have to run away from the horse. Oh! Oh, that is really cool. So, yeah, here... There's just not much that can be done. If the king runs further, the rook drops. So, he's like uh, Alexei's saying, uh, he's hard pressed for Igoma for a blocking piece. Um, and, oh wait, then there's this. But. Oh, do we drop it there instead? To ensure that there's space to continue dropping pieces, I suppose. Um, this is super... Oh, take the rook? Wait. We're saying either move works, or just I have to take the rook here? Or just take... Yeah. So, interesting. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. Because you don't need a rook to checkmate. I know in chess, rooks and queens are frequently used in a mate. But yeah, this... Yeah, this is mate. So, that's good. So, backing up... I was thinking that the king was going to be able to escape somehow this way, but... Yeah, and I was thinking this is less likely to survive because I was afraid of this move. Um, but given the alternative? Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's not the easiest thing to read ever, but that's really clever. So I miss this mate. Oh yeah, thank you very much for the game and for what part of the game post game analysis you're able to perform with us here. So yeah, back here, I missed um, this promotion. Actually, forces mate because with all the with a couple interpositions, every variation resolves to mate, including one where I exchange the rooks and just mate with the generals. Not super easy to see, but if I'd spent more time lining it up on previous turns, maybe I could have spotted it. Um, so, what else did I missed? I thought this was good. For, I mean, clearly if they go back here, this is just very powerful and mating. Um, so, yeah, the game... Uh, hang on, did I miss something critical here? Oh, yeah. This is kind of weird. So this rook drop very much surprised me that it dropped here instead of elsewhere. This being so close to the king does cut off a lot of squares but it has the disadvantage of uh, that, like, where's the rook going to go next? And it blocks the bishop as well. 
Let's see, what have we missed here? 9922 Rook. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a look at 9922 Rook promotion. Yeah, I don't need to fixate on my opponent's opportunities because the mates that appear here are more interesting than trying to solve the Yosa. Okay, yeah, I tried to think about this during the game. This was a critical position. I was unsure whether to take on 2-2 or 4-2. Um, okay, so if I take... Oh, God. This is really straightforward. This is extremely straightforward. I should have seen this. That's embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So the king that has no defenders with the one space gap... I've only seen if the one space gap from the head and the tail of the king, I guess. The butt of the king. Apparently from the side, it's just as effective if you have these other pieces to support it. Like, that... That's egg on my face. For I considered this a lot in the turns preceding it as well as on the turn it was possible and I continuously missed it. Well, that's embarrassing. So, yeah, that's how this game should have ended. Uh, so that's... I th wow. I'm kind of speechless or... Um, at a loss for words about just missing that. I mean, this rook sack was... No, it was sound. It was sound. The, clearly, they can't take it. But, like, the way I pursued this is not the best. Surely there's some other silly mate here. Like, probably this mate's... Um... I was concerned about this, but that's because I missed mate in one. Um, yeah, this is embarrassing, but um, I guess we've learned something from it, which is practice your checkmates, folks. <laughs> There's just a whole litany of things that I missed. Um, but yeah, I guess the opening was kind of a roller coaster. Oh, yeah, so the reason I can get away with this is because, like, they don't have a piece to block with. And the reason they don't have a piece to block with is because they had to drop the piece to the Igoma here. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is an interesting game. And it's a shame that we had to... That I failed so many times to deliver the mate here. Um, at least I found something at the very end. Oh, it didn't go out to 150 some moves like I thought. So, but yeah, we did find a mate. It took longer than necessary. And I was exposing myself to a lot of risk here. Is there anything else of interest? Um... So I briefly considered this sort of thing and thought, no, that's dumb. And I stand by that, that this particular approach is dangerous. Uh, my pawn drop doesn't look necessary. Um, oh yeah, so here... When they retreated back the rook, I considered this exchanging stuff, but that's not smart. I did consider it, because you, like, you have to consider your candidate moves, but it doesn't mean the candidate moves are all good. Um, so yeah, this knight 5-5 five five I think was decently clever. Um, ultimately, we did see the knight drop on 4-4, four four, right? So if the idea was to drop the knight on 4-4, this might have been a better opportunity to drop it. Um, 
So note that if we go like this, then that's not so smart. So instead we have to do this, and I don't know. It's a game, but... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, the other fun thing to note is that this is an illegal move. Uh, because the knight covers these squares and the bishop covers that. So this would be a pawn drop checkmate, which would be illegal. So um, thanks to the pawn drop checkmate rule, uh, I can get away with this kind of a move. Um, yeah, I just barely survive this. So what an adventure. Um, yeah, for those who missed the very start, we uh, my opponent in previous games has played... Whoops, I was intending to draw an arrow like that. So they've played the rook over to 2-2, two, two, or 8-8. Eight, eight. This opposing rook style, but they delay it. This is generally how our uh, teaching ladder games have gone. And... Um, yeah, I have yet to study the Joseki to remember that this is the direction I can go. So it's entirely fine for me to... Like, this reclining silver early in the game would not prevent me from playing pawn 6-5 like I thought it might. And I've seen this idea before that, like, this trying to cover that square doesn't actually cover it until they have another piece defending this on the bishop's head. Or the rook has to go here to defend it. The bishop's got to go somewhere else. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. My other teaching ladder game will be against Escape Artist. Hopefully we'll get that. I don't have time to schedule that this weekend. Um, I apologize that I'd uh, not been available for the other time we'd hoped to play it. But anyway, um... Yeah, between that and the All-American uh, Fall Tournament uh, Finals, best of three uh, with Iron Gray, we're going to have some games coming up. So I figured I got to play some exciting games, got to play third file Rook to try to de-rust with it. Learned something new today, that was great. Also learned about um, this 9-9, nine -nine, um, I mean... I've been evaluating this, I've been evaluating this, trying to figure out like just how that goes. If we try to get the king surrounded in the center of the board, the king kind of escapes out this way, so that's different. But um, yeah, this actually does mate in rather straightforward fashion because I have two golds and a bishop. So like there's no escaping this. It's not even close. Um, so I think this is the most combative reply, but uh, yeah, the dragon can just give chase. There's a lot of ways to mate here, so yeah, this is a shape I should know, and I don't know exactly how many generals you have to have for this shape to mate, but it's a common shape. Learn it, know it, use it on your friends make more friends. I don't know. Anyway, I hope we enjoyed this game, uh, and thanks for watching it.